well to push tier 3, and you have no one to save him. No one really to have the, like your defensive saves, right? They had aggressive saves with blink stun and hook shot to actually dive and force the fight to save the life stealer. But they didn't have anything to like fully just disengage and say, right, we're out of here. Especially with Secret having so much chase as well. Uh, there were a few problems, you know, looking back at the draft and kind of how things went from the laning stage. I, I, I agree. I think they needed to rack up a, 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 like a huge lead. A huge yeah. lead to get Ten themselves through that game. Lead. But Secret start off with a Bane and a Necro. The classic Five puppy Bane coming lead. out potentially here. Yeah. Yeah, the Necro as well. I mean, we talked last game how it could have been for Ace. Ended up being for Hook in the offlane. Pretty rough game for Hook, but he's playing offlane Necrophos. That role sucks. Uh, that hero does like... When you're in the offlane roles, Necrophos, it's basically only because of the draft versatility at this point. You know, people aren't going into pubs really and spamming the, uh, the Necrophos offlane at the, the highest tier right now. It's mostly just about that idea of, okay, well, we pick Necrophos early if they decide to counter it hard at all. Um, like, Morana's considered a pretty good counter, of course, because of the, all that magic burst during the Ghost Shroud. Uh, you just build, you know, pipes and hoods and all these other items on the hero, and you don't get too much farm priority, but you're just there. Maybe throw it a scythe every once in a while. You split push some lanes, so yeah, got the job done as they won themselves the game. But if they uh, turn this into like an ace necrophos and he's just god tier, it's probably going to be because of a uh, a lot more priority on the hero, of course. Yeah, not really uh, necessarily a huge skill thing. Five Although ace is pretty remember. pretty ownage. Let's be honest. He, he is. This hero is Onage as well, though. The Venomancer. Bleh. Bleh. But Gross Onage. Hero. What definition of the word Onage are you using Wins here? games. Wins... Okay, fair enough. <laughs> sure, I'll, get, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Maybe not this one, though. I don't know. It's an uphill battle. Yeah, it's, uh, it sure is. Well, time to start banning things. There's the Doom ban, as we've seen from China. Pretty much the, uh, the counter to the Necrophos. As you and the Ember at that rate. Oh, yeah, right, as well. Would have been nice. Then you would have had the remnant nuke damage into the scythe. That would have been a nice little combo. But yeah, Doom pretty much just castrates Necro, right? Ten you put one spell on him, and he's wandering around saying, Oh, I can't do anything. Can't cast Ten my spells. It doesn't really offer too much outside of that. And the Lich also removed. So they've taken out three of Lizard's heroes here. So mm. I'm not entirely sure what he's going to end up playing, because I've only seen him play AA, IO, and Lich, in, in competitive games anyway. <laughs> I, I know, you know, he plays a sick... Oh, Visage! Visage is out there as well. There's the potential for the Lizard Visage, so that's maybe what they look towards. I think we knew that ban was likely to come out here, though, in the second phase, the Ember Spirit. Um, depending on this pick from Secret, I still would like to look at the Silencer. Uh, it's hard for a lot of position 5 heroes to do much with Clockwork. But the global Ten presence of remaining. Silencer is one of the few that can actually assist him. And I guess you could say Lich can throw a Frost Armor on before remaining. he jumps in or something like that. But uh, up against Necrophos and Bane, Silencer is already very strong during the Fiend's grip potential or just shutting down Necrophos during a team fight and forcing him maybe to build into Greaves or something like that, which any Necrophos in the mid lane or the safe lane doesn't really want to do. I guess you could argue that's at least one benefit to off lane Necrophos is you can kind of get away with that build. Dire team pick. Earth spirit. It'll be the Earth Spirit, though. Okay, so much more traditional here in terms of the supports from Team Secret, which probably means they're looking to not give up as much during the early game. Uh, have some more natural lane rotations. Maybe try and shut... Like, because they... Did they pressure anyone on the side of EPG last game? I don't think they did, right? There was not a single, like, hero that felt like they were going to have a bad lane. Who was in the top lane? It, it was, was the clockwork, clockwork versus the Necrophos. That was pretty fine. That was fine. Then we was... had the mid lane for the Marana, and like you got punched around a bit, but you know you're not really going to kill her that easily. And Marana um, led in the last hits for the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and the only person that really died was Yol when he was trying to make plays um, onto some other heroes. But there will be silence. It won't be the silencer. It will be one who silences in the Skywrath Mage. Um, also, heavy magic damage against the Necrophos, so we'll consider this acceptable. Also, a really sick combo if you can hook into the Necro. You've got the Mystic yep. Flare, the magic damage, Ten so Necro is in that position where he either has to go Shroud and try and heal and take a bunch of damage from Skyrath Mage, or he just stands there and tanks the Battery Assault. Definitely going to be uh, another four staff game for Secret. This is probably one of the most iconic pub duos I can remember, was Clockwork Skyrath Mage. It's like right up there with like Crystal Mane Jug or Veno Jug, when those were just being spammed every single game it felt like. Boss Skyrath Mage is quite a bit of fun. 
what, when you're giggling at what, what these gross pub combos. I mean, I remember See, Sky. There was like actually so many games where there was Skyrath Mage Clockwork Void, and it was so annoying. So you know, you're 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 going through all these legit combos, and in my head, when you say iconic pub combo, I think back to Garena, and I think of all my games where there was a Pudge SF Marana Techies plus one, like every game. That that's. That's what I think of when I think of iconic yeah, pub combos. Enough. Is yeah. Garena, European, high level room one. Everyone was like spam clicking to try and get the Marana or the Pudge. Someone was going to pick, you know, Invoker or SF. And there would be someone like me who's like, screw this game. I'm picking techies. I'm going to try and get a first blood and then my job's done. But yeah. Scarf Clock. Thank God that hero is nice. still removed for now. <laughs> so if we're dealing with this, then um, already tons of magic damage on the side of EPG. So uh, we can probably get a pipe built from Necrophos. We've seen a couple of Earth Spirits able to work their way up there as well. But of course, that's going to be much later on in the draft. Uh, sadly, you don't have a Rubik Dyer option team. here because all this came out after the Bane was already picked. And well, there's your pipe builder. Yeah. Numero dos, perhaps. Probably the best offlane pipe builder right now, especially in NA. Everyone's all about the Underlord. We've been seeing some uh, Tidehunter picks as well. But uh, Underlord is the top dog currently. I think I saw some, uh, I think there was a Zai Underlord last night for the Dire. I think we've been seeing quite a bit of the uh, Moo Underlord coming we, back, too. We had a Universe Underlord last night, didn't That's we? That's right, we did. We did, yeah. yeah we did, we did. In a people, uh, thrashing of EG over Immortals, my god. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was. Those were some hard games to watch, man. They, they utilized it really nicely, though, you know, pushing one lane, then using the Dark Rift to go back to their shrines to contest Roshan, or to defend their Tier 1s and Tier 2s. There are lots of nice little nifty things you can do once that Underlord... Gets a few levels under his belt, and of course he's difficult to bring down. Like you mentioned, with, with a pipe build, he's just so damn tanky. Uh, killing him off is not the easiest endeavor as EPG. Now what do you do? Do you double down on magic damage and just say, okay, sure, you're going to buy a pipe, you're going to have the Underlord aura, but you have a lot of heroes that are relatively squishy and still susceptible pre-pipe and even during that pipe period to a bunch of magic damage with Scarth, with Venno, with a bit of catch from Clockwork, we can definitely pile in onto a hero and nuke them down. So go for the Void, so that's going to add into it another combo hero. And you, you, dude, I told you, you, you dude. Clockwork, you did. Skyrath, Mage, Void, I warned you. You warned me? Uh, I did not time. heed your warnings, Trent, uh, and neither did Secret. Um, yeah. Oh, well. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I have not seen an Underlord save out of Chrono. That would be pretty hype. Five seconds what if he just like blinked in? Like he had like blink underlord and he just like charges up on the side. And it's like the anti epicenter. Just like, ah, everyone out. <laughs> pretty slick. But... Saved ya. We're even just saving people from the uh, poison over from Venno. That'd be pretty nice. See what they head into. Monkey King Band. As EPG. The Yol hero. They... Yeah, they're looking for the Yol hero, aren't they? It feels like offlane clock, safe void, mid Venno, the uh, the five Scarath for Lizard potentially coming out here is likely for them. They are, I think the Yol hero as well. While Secret, they're looking for the mid one hero, right? Invoker. And there's no Ember. Shadow Fiend here seems not awful. Dire team pick. Pugna, perhaps. Oh, they're the brood. Pugna. Hmm. Oh, with a with a Nether Ward. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Am I right? That was, like, that was a run. classic. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty fun. Um, DP is also still there. I think some decent heroes for like, because right now they already have some decent like group up and we have this pipe. Like, who can abuse the fact if like we are going to get all this remaining. support from the Underlord and maybe the Necrophos even too, like healing up and stuff. Uh, but DP could be a hero to opt in that. And even the Marana for themselves, I think, could be fairly strong for Seeker, right? You already have the Bane. Uh, combos up decently well with the Necrophos too. Maybe that would put them a bit too heavy into the magic damage, but Lena will be the choice here. So I'm not sure. Uh, is this like off lane Venno maybe then in a Yol Clockwork? Um, safe lane Void and the mid Lena probably for EPG? Yeah, that's the way it looks. Seconds remaining. Still the option to switch things around and secret. Oh, hello. All right. Okay. Well, we were asking for him game one. We know Secret's a team that likes to bring it out when necessary. Is that at? Wait, what? So Ace... Please tell me this. There's not. This is not actually a mid one underlord, is it? Uh, uh I don't know, Trent. <laughs> All right, guys. I know uh... you're on one, but it's still single a lib. I'm just gonna assume it's not really. Um, but... that would be pretty funny. I... It, it looks like. I mean, Huskar here has no save behind him. He he has no oracle. There's no dazzle. But you look at EPG. 
They don't really have any good ways to lock him down when he's jumping around on these targets. They don't have any good physical damage outside of the Faceless Void. Everything else is just magical. So Huskar, you know, sure, he's going to get a bit annoyed with the Veno with the tick damage there, but he should be able to armlet stick himself out of that kind of dangerous position. They've got a, a bunch of lockdown, but yeah, we were, we were chatting about the Necro Huskar combo, right? With the life break into Reaper Scythe. No one can survive this. Everyone is going to die. Well, I'm interested to see uh, what mid one does on his Underlord, though. Come on. I mean, I assume he'll play offlane, right? And it's just like, this is just a necessity out of having a stand-in who says like, Yeah, I love Necrophos. I'll play Necrophos. Like, oh, we actually, I think we want an Underlord. And he goes, oh, I don't play Underlord. More mint shields, so I think this is a mid Underlord. Yo, let's go. Now we're talking. <sighs> Mid Underlord, okie dokie, against the Lena. Let's see how this goes. Uh, okay, that's that's going to be actually pretty nasty for the Lena, isn't it? If you have a PMS and you buy Quelling Blade on Underlord, you, <laughs> the only way you get last hits in that lane is by Dragon Slaving. <laughs> like, legitimately, Boronia has to like out mind game mid one somehow because 65 base damage with an amazing attack animation on Underlord, and Lena mm, does not have the same luxury. All right. I'm intrigued. Face confused. He's got the uh, the void emotes rolling. What? Why is mid one playing the fat fat hero? What? what what's what's happening here? What is going on? So yeah, over on EPG they do have the Yolk Clockwork. You were right. Mitch will be the off lane Veno, and that'll put Faye onto the safe lane Void as we've seen before. He had a bit of a an interesting game the other day with his Void. He had a very good start, landing some sick Chronos. Then he had a period of, you know, five, six minutes where mm, it didn't go so well. So definitely got to get the first couple of chronos down here from Faye. Get that morale boosted up and make sure that you know what you're doing. Synchronize up with the rest of your team as well. Obviously going to be very important here with the combos that they can lay in oh through God. Lena and the Skywrath into the big blue bubble. As Yol gets a good deep observer ward down. Not scouted at all, but so do Secret in behind that tier <laughs> 1 in the bottom luck. lane. Mid, mid one underlord. Oh, this is pleasant. Right. <laughs> I'm hyped about this Huskar though. I wasn't. I didn't think we'd get it. I mean, we we spent all this time talking all this magic damage on the side of EPG, and uh, secret are they're down, man. They're up a game. They're ready to roll. Rock out the uh, ace Huskar, but uh, like you said, no real saving power here. So, be interesting to see. Maybe we'll actually see someone buy Crimson Guard for the first time in a year. Uh, <laughs> thinking of ways to save your Huskar when he's low in terms of like some physical damage but there's not that much physical damage honestly on the Dire the only thing we have to worry about really would be the Lena Agonims I suppose right might be the, the one game we see it yeah that is uh, that is gonna be it uh, but Trent I, I believe Puppy bought a Crimson Guard just now in the previous game didn't he oh did he have one near the end yeah he did 38 I mean, minutes he was, in he, he he's bought... a bounty hunter I, that doesn't count I'm talking <laughs> about when the item's actually useful sure okay did he actually buy one of those? He, he, he did. He bought a Crimson Guard right at the end. No, oh, that's pretty funny. He had we, Crimson uh, Solo We do not see that item ever. It is so Garbo. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, even again, like when people pick Drow Strats, people still don't pick the Crimson Guard, even how, you know, theoretically good it can be up against just yeah. physical damage. But unfortunately, the item is not to be. So mid one, he is the one in the middle lane. Quelling Blade, PMS. After the bounty rune, nice there. Boronir starts with the LSA to secure that initial deny. Yapzor rolls forward. Going to get a few little slaps there onto the Lena. But Boronir, amazing start already, I've got to say. Two last hits, one deny, mid one. Being outplayed by the Lena, just a touch, but Puppy bottom lane. He is being chased here with the Gale and the Battery Salt going onto the Bane. But Ace has the Burning Spear, starts applying them across to these EPG heroes. Not going to be able to find any kills though, unfortunately, as the Bane. Will be the first one to fall. Another roll forward though, landing onto the Lena. LSA stops them in their tracks again as mid one. Level one in the Atrophy Aura. Not going to be able to throw any further damage with a Firestorm or anything like that. You just uh, handle those side lanes. And I'm just going to watch mid this whole time. because <laughs> This is great. Uh, so it, it shouldn't be too much of a mystery, right? You probably just do the same build as offlane at this point. Uh, we stand just have his like, you know, 404 or whatever. 
You're just maxing out the firestorm as well as the attribute aura, stack up some damage for yourself. But the Lena, one thing that's really annoying is even without boots, she can get relatively fast, right? Because of the fire soul. So it's hard to actually abuse your attribute aura instead of like, like in terms of bullying her. Because mid one's just getting pelleted. It's very obnoxious over and over again. Bora is just right clicking him non stop. Yeah, this, this 0 1 1 build. Unexpected from me, but working out here for the Lena. Stunning and just right clicking. And Borani has Lena already. Forcing the salve out from mid one. And the rest of the lanes, how we're looking. Yol goes in to try and steal the bounty rune. Yapsor. Hello. <laughs> Who gets it? It's Yol. Now with the battery sword and Yapsor having no roll. Oh, he gets into this little creep camp, trying to dodge away from the battery salt. Cuts through the tree. Yol's still chasing. A couple more hits and he'll get him. Clockwork takes down the Earth Spirit. In the meantime, the Puppy Bane is trying to rotate over to catch him, but he has already TP'd out. Uh, Mid-Watch 2017. Uh, they are last sitting. It's going fairly evenly, but Mid-1 has taken the lead. Starting to stack up that damage. He is straight up just buying a hood, by the way, without boots. Nice little uh, puppy save coming through. Yapzor. Oh, that firestorm with an orb of venom. Lizard, if there's one more hit here, maybe they can catch him. But Yapzor, still level one. Doesn't have a boulder smash or anything to throw into the mix. So they won't secure that kill. But yeah, the the, the hood rush, kind of reminiscent of what... Um, what we used to see from Timbersaws when they were playing mid for quite some time, right? Maybe yep. did it a lot as well. You'd even... Abed. Abe did a lot, yeah, it's kind of the Chinese Southeast Asian style where uh, you just go for that hood. I mean, we even saw Atwell Devourers going for it, you know, brown boots into, into hood pretty much. Yeah, but who needs brown boots? Dude? Who nope. needs brown boots? Nice, yo, tax the boulder <laughs> smash, the boulder oh, roll leaving. <laughs> yeah, I did some quick trigonometry there and figure out something wasn't quite right. <laughs> I have hit a target that is invisible. What has happened here? And uh, unfortunately, that does mean that there's no chance on the kill because mid one's out of there. Doesn't want to handle that. And uh, satisfied with his cloak, he'll start getting in towards a bottle. Still trying to figure out the Underlord mid meta. It's a touchy subject right now, so mid one is not exactly sure where to go. Doesn't want to uh, offend any scholars out there, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably feels he needs that mana regen. Just to uh, be able to keep these waves away from the Lena trade across as Yamsor. Nice little snipe there, takes the Arcana rune away from the Lena, but Yol in behind, hunting for the Earth Spirit. He's going to roll in Boulder, but it's cancelled out. Now they look for the LSA, dodging back and forth a little bit here. Yapsil yeah, tries to dance, need it. but the Cogs trap him in, and they get yet another kill. Zero to three. Hey. I have not been looking at this uh, Venno, but I'm going to guess it's probably not going too well, eh? 11 last hits to the 33. Venomancer is such a bad offlaner if you get behind. You can't do anything. Like, what What do you even do? You you can't, you have to like buy an Iron Talon or something. This Bane has warded up. You're part of the map, so he knows when you were going for these bounty runes or anything like that during this whole early period. I'm top Probably lane now. going to come up here again. Looking for him. Look. Oh dear. He's got the Ghost Shroud, but no magic stick. He didn't have anything to heal himself. He rushed the phase boots. Meantime, mid lane there is a nightmare from Puppy. With mid one Firestorm through the attack damage from Bane. Two more hits is what he needs because Boronia sticked up. Escapes in behind the tier two. And now Puppy's going to take a few tower hits here. Another Arcane Bolt might actually secure his demise. Mana is regening up. He's got it now. Lizard in range with the Brain Sap. Nice. Puppy turns around, regens up, and they'll be able to shrine back up to full very nicely. Hoping you have enough mana for the uh, style play, where you just keep running until you nightmare yourself for the save, but he was uh, unfortunately too low and had to go for the default brain stat maneuver. I know, Puppy's a man of flair. He would have went for the nightmare, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he would yeah. have. <laughs> you guys have seen him before. That, that, you know, there's a reason he had that luscious hair for so long. All about the style. Fabio at heart. Um, but top lane hook, uh, just necroing again, man. Uh, 16 last hits to the 35. Man, what a great game to be safe laners, honestly. Void's doing fine. Other side's a Huskar. Boronia's killing Yapsor in the mid lane. 5 0. Jeez, it's uh, starting to look like last game here. Was that, a, that was a solo kill, but Hook is being caught cool top lane again. The Ghost Shroud comes out a little too late as he pushed back by the Cogs at the same time. But Boronia was just alone there, right? 1v2. Yapsor rolls in. I, I didn't catch it, but I assume that's what happened. I was waiting for the mid, uh, the top gank. 
Yeah. Nice. All kinds of assistance. Oh, look, Brown Brutes Bracer, six and a half minutes in, ace. 55 inch, well, what's his net worth? 3,300. Oh, 3, Fake calls a good game, <laughs> yeah. He's seen the Husker has the armor, he's like, okay, right, this is where this is where things get really nasty, guys. Ace is going to be running around looking for kills, and they can also activate this Hook Necro a little bit earlier, like we were saying, with the Life Break into the Reaper Scythe. You do, of course, need the level 6 on Necro first, and that's going to be what he aims for in the next 30 seconds or so, just try and get that as safely as he possibly can. Mid lane has been a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppy from Secret. Boronia moving into the phase boots, but you're right, zero to six. It feels very similar to game number one, but does Secret have the same kind of overbearing game plan, like trajectory yeah, win that they that's had previously? That's what my thought process is right now, because I don't think so. I feel much better for EPG this game. Like, I don't necessarily mean they're just gonna win 100% or something stupid like that, but like, compared to the last game, at least I see a plan here. Yeah. Um, and I see a plan with possible success. My biggest question mark is still gonna be the Venno for sure. It's gonna be a lot like what I think Hook looked like last game, where on that Necromancer, you're like, what is this hero even doing? But once again, it comes down to that versatility and the possibilities during the draft, but... Oh, speaking of horror, Mitch here. Sorry, who? Yeah, yeah, that, that thing that just melted. I believe it was a candle in the jungle. Oh, speaking of that, <laughs> man, we're talking about these off laners. Jeez, maybe it's time to ditch these versatile off lane heroes and the Necrophos and the Venomancer because they are just having a terrible time, the two of them. Uh, at oh. least uh, Venomancer isn't quite at support net worth levels like the Necrophos is. And at least Venom's level 6. Necro's still struggling to get there. Yeah. Look, having a much harder time against this void. With the Clockwork and the Sky both roaming around as Lina gets her phase boots. Tier 1 bottom lane is being chunked down here by Ace on the Huskar. Not going to fall just yet as Puppy tries to scout out for any movements across near this shrine area. Sees the Clockwork, sees the Lina, but he's getting wrapped. Dude, this is really on. scary right now, this Huskar, because he's only level 1 in Berserker's blood. Like, Yeah, you're uh, right. Now it doesn't matter, she casts all her spells though. He still jumps in with a shrine there though this might be a turnaround potential ace taken down a double kill for Boronia LSA is there as well finally falls to the burning spears but a three for that's a three for one right they they killed the bane initially yeah, yeah they three got the for bane one. too yeah that was a bit weird to go in that early as Huskar I feel like that's risky business especially right next to a shrine very fortunate that they did get the lean at the very least Russell Women obviously much uh, much worse for them but uh, it's 10 to 2 and it's only a 1k lead uh, Mid one is farming like crazy. He's doing well. Uh, I guess he's falling a little bit, actually. Last time I looked, he was above the uh, faceless void, but Tahaskar is now starting to catapult himself out of control because he's getting every single asset down here. 82 and 20 right now. Well, Barney, he's starting to put some pressure on that tower, too. Looks to zap Puppy. He's holding on to 9. He drops like 4 HP. He pops the stick. Doesn't even pop the stick. Rebrain zap. He's holding on to the 10th stick charge. It's what, Puppy? Oh, what are you doing? He's surviving and he doesn't even use his freaking regen. Now Boronir turns back to try and burst down mid one. They have another LSA, but he's pushed onto the high ground by Yol. Chase comes in from Yapsaw and Hook. They have the Reaper Scythe, but the stun comes in. They are unable to capitalize. Now EPG, they have the high ground. They want to swing back into battle. Boronir finds an Invis rune and now it's all calming down. The storm has passed. Poppy with the mad jukes on that dragon slave. That was pretty slick, eh? Going up the hill and then, oh, right back. Dude, the dragon slave. Lena's here. Puppy's here. He turns to face Lena. Takes like a couple of hits. Oh, Ace goes in. Faye with the chrono. Actually catching on to Mitch there, canceling the TP. This is going to be a dead Venno potentially. Do you have stick charges? Ace does, but doesn't use them in time. Still gets brought down. But yeah, Puppy just like turns and faces, drops to 5 HP. Then he brain saps, and he had 10 stick charges that he doesn't use. The balls on this man are huge. No. The value play. Oh, oh no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the worst feeling. Dyer's I love Dota. <laughs> That's the little things. Was he just farming and gets dragon slaved? Yeah, he was just doing the value play. I don't even think he was trying to deny himself because he, he had enough time to just like get the kill on the creep and walk home. One of those things. He was so low on HP. But he's back now. He is, but the kick though. 
And Damn. just rolling boulder mist as well. Ace apparently still wants to go in here. Nightmare. Oh, puppy, that's there, why. There's, there's a bane up here. There's a bane on the high ground, apparently. And there we go. The life break, a few hits, and the Reaper Scythe bring down Molina. I think he thinks he's still playing Bounty Hunter. <laughs> what are you doing how here, dude? He... There's, there's no Io Tiny on your team. Why is he up here? <laughs> no, how? No, I don't care about what. Like, why is fine. How did he get there? That's dude, my he's question. He's a speedy guy. He just 355. He's just there. Magic. Uh, better split push out from EPG. Faye gets a tower at bottom. Mask of Manus treads. You know, farm through, waiting for that Corona to come back up for the team fights that EPG require. Because they do have their level six now on the clockwork and the sky wrath, so the combo is ready. Hookshot, oh, yeah. Cogs, Mystic Flare. Who can you kill? Who can you find? Apparently no one just yet as EPG passively defending this tier one and secret. They spread thin across the map now. Looking for farm in their jungle. Try and take control of their, their uh, kind of bottom part of, the, part of the map here. Bay is farming like a madman. He's catching up the Huskar. He is farming exceptionally fast. Is he going to finish out the Lincoln Sphere? Is that the right choice here? Up against the Bane, up against the Necrophos, it probably is. It's going to slow down his damage a bit. And I'm worried because it is still going to be pretty tough to deal with this Huskar. And then we've had some issues with the Lena Bloodstones. It looks like Borinia is still considering it. He doesn't have the Arcane Boots either, so he's further away uh, than uh, many of our, Maron, or, uh, our Lena's have been lately. I don't know. I like this a little better than, you know, the brown boots, arcane boots, then disassemble into bloodstone. Having phase boots at least oh, give you time something. Faye in onto mid one. With the chrono here, they are going to secure this kill on the Underlord. Bash has come out. And yo, didn't even need to use his hook shot. Secret now looking for a bit of aggression of their own. Smoked up as three. Hook, Yapsaw, and Puppy looking for someone top lane. Lizard, oh, he oversteps. He's moved oh, too far forward. He goes for one hit on the tower, and he's going to pay. The Nightmare in to smash and roll. Hook secures the kill. Yeah, they kept their spacing during that, too, because they, they knew Boronir was still around, and they didn't want some sort of a play to come through. Like, it's just the, the kick first from Yapsaw. He's like, I'm not rolling in right away. You know, he's not going for some crazy combos and stuff. They don't want to get like three man LS8 or something like that as they're walking Good in. Hook and, shot. Ooh, nice hook. The all finds him. Armlet turned on. Ace stands his ground, battles through, but the suns were there. The pin strip from Puppy holds the clockwork in under the tower with Yapsaw missing another boulder smash, though. Boronia a little bit too speedy to catch with the phase boots and three stacks of the fiery soul. Definitely a hard target to latch onto, so no fault of Yapsaw, just the Lena very quick on her feet. But. Also, the, the magic wand on Lena, I think, is, is pretty nifty as well. I'm not going to go for the double null. Invisibility. I, uh, I don't know. I, I feel it's less awkward going into the Bloodstone this way. But we'll see how things go. That's... I almost want to just go like Aether Agonims or something. I don't know. How are they going to deal with this Huskar? He's buying a Halberd, too. To help him deal with the, uh, the Faceless Void. And uh, mid one too. I really like his build, where he's now looking towards a Lotus Orb. Not the most common item to pick up like second or anything like that, but it's pretty crafty this game because it means he doesn't have to invest in Greaves uh, while still giving him an item that can instantly remove the silence so you don't have to buy a Yules or something which takes you out of the fight uh, and then ensure he can keep casting his spells throughout these roots or possibly even the save with the Dark Rift too. Probably the best option he had this game. Tank up. Become that utility hero. Try and survive as Trying EPG. to get their combo off. There we go. Hookshot oh, misses. The high Secret yeah, they dodge. Now do they turn and burn? Do they look to battle? Void with the oh, Corona Red. Soon. That's a crafty ward to place down. Very nicely played by Lizard. A little bit risky in case they actually made that rotation. Oh, that's a tough one. Tries to get the Corona on the hook, but... Bit too speedy. Good game, <laughs> once again called. The phase boots, man, the rocks are missing, the chronos are missing. Yeah. And you're gonna have this four staff on the necro soon as well, and now chronos dead for another 100 seconds. This opens the map up for secret for sure, especially for Ace on this Huskar, who's definitely afraid of the void being his primary nemesis in this game. Doesn't look like secret are trying to make anything happen just yet. Poking their head into the Roche pit and hiding there as Yol. Oh! Excuse me. Sneeze comes through <laughs> as he traps me one of the cogs. I couldn't mute fast enough, but Yol looks like he's about to die with a brain tap and a final swipe. 
I thought you were really shocked, like, by the just like, Whoa! Well, I reached, I reached over to mute, and as I went to press it, it just came out. I was like, angry, I was angry as I was sneezing, so it just, like, I don't know. Stupid bodily functions, I hate you so much. Uh, well, this is uh, the big thing the radiant lineup obviously has with the Huskar. It's Roshan, it's easy. Fire, I mean, we can't neglect Firestorm as well, of course. Um, that percent damage against Roshan. Who thought that was a good idea? Uh, but easily put on the ace, and who needs defensive supports if you just always have an Aegis? Hey, it's genius. So clever. So, and that's so why clever. you don't buy Aghanims on Lena, because he'll get an Aegis, and you'll be very sad. Then you get refresher ads, right? Uh, right, then sorry. Fine. Keep forgetting about these simple solutions. So simple. I mean, you just instantly uh. buy it. Mitch with a Solar Crest on this Venno. Doesn't have himself a you know, full staff, a blink, a Midas, and Aghanims. No, no sick items here. It is just a poor Venno. Kind of playing the... Feels like Cancel almost this a... TP, though. Like a three and a half roll here, as Yol honestly feels more like the three this game. The way he's been farming and playing. Venno's just going to be there to try and keep Secret away from their towers, but... Avoid and Alina making a play for the tier 2 bottom. This long TP from Yapsaw doesn't allow them to really jump in and find a target to catch. The EPG, good little bit of damage there. Full retreat. Do lose a bit of momentum top though, but they'll TP to Shrine. They'll look for this Chrono as well. Faye and the, moves the on Mitch forward. Backstab. He's been waiting for this play for so long. And there's the Solar Crest. Chrono being held by Faye. Pop the ulti. Trying to take this Aegis before they do anything else. Poppy cancels out on the Fiend's Grip, but Ace is still alive, still turning and hitting with the Disarm. They have the Chrono now, but the damage from Faith not there just yet, but the Reaper side, they don't avoid him, nearly killed him off, and they do with a Boulder Smash coming out from Yapsor. That turnaround, the reactions to Secret, just too damn quick. Yeah, very, very well played by Puppy, and then of course with Midwan being able to bring the rest of the allies in. Makes the play easy, but that nightmare onto the void just completely stopped what they were trying to do there for the side of the dire. Chrono couldn't get off at the right time. Venomancer dies right away. Doesn't really have an impact on the engagement. Don't even get the Aegis when they pop down the Chrono Sphere. I mean, even if they only got Aegis for that Chrono, it was still going to look pretty bad for EPG. But that certainly looked like it was going to be the goal. But now Puppy goes forward once again with the nightmare, wasting their time. I mean, honestly, it looked like they wanted to hold the Chrono for the fight after the Aegis. Yeah, exactly. And they tried the hook shot, the Venno ulti to try and kill him, but Borania trapped inside the pit. Mid one helps hook secure a kill on the opponent mid lane hero. And 19 minutes in, with EPG leading in kills, Secret push high ground here with Ace ripping through these barracks. The tower has already fallen. As you can see, Faye has no Chrono. Lizard, Mystic Flare at the ready, but they need a hook shot into Cogs, which, oh, they have, but. No cogs for five seconds, so they jump in. Ace takes down Faye. The void is gone. The racks are falling. And Secret, it looks like they might close this one out in short order. Yol just doesn't have the cojones to jump in without his void. And they'll let the racks fall as their tier twos, they're still standing. There's, there's even still a tier one mid. So Secret, they get a lane of racks after taking <laughs> only three towers out on the rest of the map. Oh man, I mean they should uh, they should know this pretty well, right? This uh, this whole Huskar thing, because every time they do it, they uh, they don't pick that defensive support. If I'm not mistaken, when they had it during Kiev, they didn't have a defensive support. They oh, they had an IO. That's what it was. So it wasn't like the traditional Oracle or the Dazzle, but it's obviously still pretty good. Um, but then they did it for the TI qualifiers, and it was a Lich, which is still kind of a defensive support, but it's not that same thing. Uh, that was actually against Danish Bears. I looked it up, which is pretty hilarious, obviously, because now it's Ace playing the Huskar for Secret. <laughs> hey! After uh, getting knocked out of the, the qualifiers by Secret. But the world works in mysterious ways. Doesn't it? <laughs> so does so did Dota 2 roster shuffles, honestly. Oh, here we go, Secret. Aegis still up for another minute. Ace. Looking... They know where this clockwork is, and they have a ward, too. We also have a nightmare. Yapsaw yeah, lining up the, the stuff. Are going to go for it? Yeah, Feeds grip and silence. Three for five. Not quite good enough. Mistimed a little bit there. A little too early. You saw what they were doing though. They played it at one. It's the exact same as that gang top where it's so slow and methodical where they're just waiting because they're scanning the shrine at the same time. They're just like, all right, one skill at a time. 
Nobody claps and nobody panic. This, this is definitely very like drow strat esque, right? Where they know that any small giveaway on these heroes, like this is a strat that works because of these five heroes that are kind of playing together right now. Everyone backing up Huskar, everyone's staying apart from each other, no two man stuns, no giant chrono. Just chill and let Huskar do his thing. Faye is looking for the giant chrono, the Trent. He is in the back. Mask of Manus Lincoln's ready. He wants to jump. The Aegis is about to expire. Ooh, right now, in fact. Oh, Faye. Oh, he Ooh, thought about it. He does for a split second. Now the roll into kick into silence as well. They've got the combo into the chain stun, into the damage. And Faye, time walks up to the high ground. Okay, the Magnetar is going to be mitigated here by the Shrine of EPG. Faye will not die. The Chrono Spear ready anything. to go. Mid one though, the Mystic Flare. Cogs do nothing. The two man boulder smash from Yapsor. In they go. The Poison Nova's there. But the one man Chrono's not going to be good enough. They've caught the Huskar, but they just can't kill him off with the Halberd there. The mischance against the Void. Spectacular stuff from Secret. That's good game. Called in team chat by Faint. And probably going to be called in all chat by Mitch in about 10 seconds time. They've got Boronir. Lena's dead. And Lizard being chased back into the fountain. EPG, hide while you can. Because your tier fours are being marauded here by Secret. Five heroes still alive and very little to answer for as EPG buy back on the Lena. This is it. Last chance. Elimination time. Game two of a best of three. Give it your all. Show us what you got, Boronir. Get in there onto the Oscar. But he's four staffed away. Boulder smash and silence. There's another fiend script from Buffy. The Void can't do anything. Look at in a blade. Looks like a bit of damage. They do bring down no one. Just a nightmare? Buffy? No one. Ace. Oh, he does go down. <laughs> that, that's what they wanted. That's all they needed. The one kill out of the Oscar to call the GG. Uh, but very well played by Secret today. A real doubt about it. Well, well done, Secret. Two to nothing. And that will mean they progress through to the semifinals against Mid or Feed.